Hello, my amazing students. This is Mrs. A, and we are back with 3.2 homework. So I'm going to go through and show you how they get all the correct answers, and we will start with number five. Okay, so here is 3.2 number five. Football player numbers listed below are the jersey numbers of 11 players randomly selected from the roster of the Seattle Seahawks when they won Super Bowl, hmm, 58. What do the results tell us? Okay, now our, our instructions are to find the range, variance, and standard deviation for the given sample of data. Include appropriate units such as minutes in your result. The same data were used in section 3.1 where we found measures of center. Here we find measures of variation. Then answer the given questions. So basically, we're going to find these three items, range and standard deviation and variation, and we're going to say, what do the results tell us? So here we have the answer um, manual, solution manual here. And notice that when, once we put the desired um, football jerseys in numerical order, we could see that the range was the highest value minus the lowest value, which is just 92. So basically, we can tell from that that football numbers aren't going to go up above 99, in this case anyway. And then the variance, which is the standard deviation squared, is going to end up taking each one, so the, the um, mean of this whole string of data is 57.1. Remember, we find the mean by adding up all of the items and dividing by the number of items that we have. And since we are doing the variance of a sample, notice that in the bottom we have n minus 1. There were 11 pieces of data. And when we're using a sample for both the um, standard deviation and the variance, we use a n minus 1, or the number of items minus 1 on the bottom. But then we take each item, um, each data point, and we take 7 take away the mean, plus 19 take away the mean, blah, 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 each one of the points. And notice we square each difference. That's the... Uh, little sum of the squares that we um, talked about that appears on your calculator. So this one squared, this one squared, this one squared, all the way across. All 11 points minus the mean and then that quantity squared. And then we add them all up together. We divide by 11 minus 1 or n minus 1 and we get 1149.5. That is the variance. Then we take the square root of the variance, and we get 33.9, which all of these are completely meaningless. It says the, the Jersey numbers are nominal data that are just replacements for names, and they do not measure or count anything, so the resulting statistics are meaningless. So you went through all of that to give me those numbers, and they were meaningless. Okay, so now we're supposed to do um, number 28 and then number 29. And 28 says use the birth weights in grams of the 400 babies listed in data set four births in Appendix B. Examine the list of birth weights to make an observation about those numbers. How does that observation affect the way that the results should be rounded? Okay, when I looked at the 400 babies, I automatically thought this must be on our stat disk. I immediately went to stat disk, went up there to the 13th edition, which is the one that we're in right now, and yep, there, number four is births. So they already told us the births were in grams. So when I went over here and I clicked on births, let me see if I can do this. Oops, got to get back up on the 13. There we go. Okay, so I'm clicking on births. And there are the births, and there is column 7, the birth weights in grams. And yes, indeed, if you scroll down, there are 400 items of data. So we know we have the correct set that they wanted us to look at, and we're looking at column 7, which is birth weight. So now I'm supposed to, instructions, it says refer to the indicated data set, in Appendix B. 
use software or a calculator to find the range, variance, and the standard deviation. Express answers using appropriate units such as minutes. In ours, we're going to use grams. So this is where it gets really cool. So we're going to go up here to um, analysis and we're going to um, go not to analysis but data. We're going to go to data. We're going to go down to explore data which is our descriptive statistics. And we're going to come over here and it tells us which one of those columns do we want to explore. So we want to do birth weight. Okay, so now we're going to evaluate Ta-da! There is our data evaluated. Okay, so our range is 4,600, which is right down here. 4,600. Our standard deviation is 693.4321. Our variance is the square of that, which is 480848.1. And we have all of our information, even down there, our first quartile, second quartile, third quartile, which they did not ask for yet. Okay, and here are the answers in the answer key. Range, 4,600, just like they said. And notice they put the grams in because they told us to put in the units. The variance is the S squared, and that's exactly what they had in the database. And then 693.4 grams. And notice what they said, all of the weights end in zero, zero. So they're rounding to hundreds of grams, hundreds, not hundredths. So they are all rounded to the nearest hundred grams. This suggests that the data should be rounded as follows, range to 4,600 and the standard deviation, um, they said, okay, so they gave you the original, but we're going to get one degree more accuracy when we round all of our um, measures of variance. So notice that they have 480,850 instead of what we truly got, which was 480,800, I mean 848.1. So since we have um, everything rounded to the hundreds place, we can go one more digit accuracy, which would be the tens place. And then over here, um, the original was again to hundreds, and so we can go to the tens place and put 690 instead of 693.4. We're allowed one more place of accuracy than we had in our original data. So aren't you very glad that I had you download the stat disk because it's coming in very, very handy to have that tool to do 400 pieces of data just like that. Okay, so now we're going down to um, problem number 29, the next one on our list. We're supposed to do um, exercise 25's data, which was tornadoes. What we're supposed to do is estimate standard deviation with the range rule of thumb. In exercises 29 through 32, refer to the data in the indicated exercise. After finding the range of the data, use the range rule of thumb to estimate the value of the standard deviation. Compare the result to the standard deviation computed with all of the data. When I go up to problem 25 and see what they mean, it says use the F scale measurements from the tornadoes listed in data set 22, tornadoes in appendix B. Be careful to account for missing data. Okay, so what we're doing is trying to find the right data set here. Um, we're doing 29 that is using the tornado data set. So what we're going to do is go find this data set. And we should be able to find this one, since it's in Appendix B, we should be able to find this one in StatDisk. Okay, so going to my StatDisk again, I go down to data in number 22 in the list, and there it is, tornadoes. So now I'm going to go up to data, and then once I'm in the data, I'm going to go down to explore data, which is the descriptive statistics. And then I want it to explore on 
They come down here. Oops, I forgot to get on the correct data set first. So now that I'm on the correct data set, which is the tornadoes, so you can see that we have a 3F and a, a 4 was fatalities, 5 was length, and 6 was width. And they told me to center in on the F scale measurements, which is column three. So I'm thinking that in this exercise 29, we will also use the F scale measurements. Now notice they have a few pieces of missing data um, that they had to deal with in problem number 25, but um, we're just gonna take them out of our count and just assume them not there. So now let's zoom in on our data. Now you can tell from the original data, it was all very simple, and it was all just like two, four, one, one, two, three, one, one, just single digit numbers. So when I look at it, the range is four, the minimum point was zero, and the maximum point was four. So my entire range was four, and remember, the range rule for figuring out the standard deviation was to take the range of 4 and divide by 4. Okay, so here's your rule that I was looking at for you. It's on page 102, and it's under example 5, range rule of thumb for estimating the standard deviation of the sample. You take the range and divide by 4. Okay, so this is not our answer, but there's the equation. In our problem data set, we see that the range is four and we divide that by four and we get one, which is very close to the actual standard deviation, which is 0 0.92988885. Well, here's the answer set. It says on page on number 29, the rule of thumb standard deviation is S is the range divided by four or four minus zero divided by four or one which is very close to the 0.9 found by using all of the data. Now notice that they rounded the standard deviation, which was originally 0.929, to just 0.9 because all of the data originally was just single digit, no decimal data. So we can only take it one more decimal place of accuracy than we started with. So we cannot have all of those pieces of, um, we should not keep all of those uh, places of accuracy because that breaks our rounding rule for all of our measures of variation. Okay, so now we're going to um, lesson problem number 33, pulse rates of females based on data set one, body data in appendix B, which means it's in your stat desk. Females have pulse rates with a mean of 74 beats per minute and a standard deviation of 12.5 beats per minute. Is a pulse rate of 44 beats per minute significantly low or significantly high? All of these pulse rates are measured at rest. Okay, our instructions for this one is identifying significant values with the range rule of thumb in exercise 33 through 36, which is one of those we're doing right now, use the range rule of thumb to identify the limits regarding values that are significantly low or significantly high. So what we wanna do is come over here to page 101. There's 101, somewhere up there, 101. And right at the top of 101, you see the range rule of thumb for identifying significant values. So we have to find the mean, which they gave us, and go down two standard deviations and up two standard deviations and see if the value that we are presented with is inside those two boundaries or is it outside the two boundaries. So I've put my data on the board. They gave us the mean, they gave us the standard deviation and we're trying to figure out is 44 significantly low or high. So I'm just gonna make our little standard curve here so we remember what we're doing and we've got 74 here is our mean and then 12.5 we're going to go to the right 12.5 each time and to the left 12.5 each time okay so now you can see that i've done my math here 
I took my 74 mean and I went 12.5 to the right and then 12.5 more to the right. And then I went back to 74 and I took away 12.5 and took away 12.5 again. And so we get that the very lowest it should be to be usual is 49 and the highest that it should be to be usual is 99. And so our indicated value, which was 44, is below the 49. So it is unusual and therefore it is significantly low. There is your answer in the answer key. Significantly low values are less than or equal to 74 minus two standard deviations, which is 49 beats per minute. And significantly high are greater than or equal to 74 plus two standard deviations or 99 beats per minute and a pulse rate of 44 beats per minute is significantly low because it's in the tail. Okay, so now we're doing problem number 41, the empirical rule based on data set one, body data in appendix B, blood platelet counts of women have a bell-shaped distribution with a mean of 255.1 and a standard deviation of 65.4. All units are 1,000 cells per, I'm not sure what that is, that's a mu L, not sure what that is medically. Using the empirical rule, what is the approximate percentage of women with platelet counts that are A, within two standard deviations of the mean, or between 124.3 and 385.9, and B, between 189.7 and 320.5? So we're using the empirical rule, which is the 68.95.99.7 rule. Okay, so the first question, I, I went ahead and distributed our data out to negative two and positive two standard deviations with the 255.1 being our mean. And we were asked first in A to find it within two standard deviations. And then they even enumerated that and said between 124.3 and 385.9. Okay, which is exactly what you get when you add the standard deviation of 65.4 two times. And then, so that is going to be between uh, two standard deviations and negative two standard deviations. And we know from the empirical rule that that will be 95% of the data without ever having to do the problem, right? And then, secondly, in the B portion here, they said within 189.7, and 320.5. So within 189.7 and 320.5 is one standard deviation to the left of the mean and one standard deviation to the right of the mean. And so remember in that area, it's 68% of the data, whereas in the two standard deviations to the left and the right, it's 95% of all the data. So the answer to A, which was the two standard deviations, was 95%, and the answer to B, which is one standard deviation to the right and the left, was 68% from our empirical rule. Here is your answer. Under 41, the empirical rule states that approximately 95% of women should fall within two standard deviations of the mean. And then in B, it says since the negative one standard deviation was at 189.7, and the positive one standard deviation was at 320.5. The empirical rule states that approximately 68% of all women should fall between one standard deviation of the mean. So that's between negative one and positive one standard deviations. So in this last one, we're using Chubby Chubb's theorem based on data set one, body data. In appendix B, blood platelet counts for women have a bell-shaped distribution with a mean of 255.1, which we just used, and a standard deviation of 65.4. All units are 1,000 cells per blah, blah. Using Chubby Chubb's theorem, what do we know about the percentage of women with platelet counts that are within three standard deviations of the mean. Okay, well we know that there are 99.7% of the women that have, um, that's from our um, empirical, but the 
empirical rule is going to apply only to our standard, normal standard. And so what we're going to do with this one is we're going to use our Chubby Chubbs rule to figure out three standard deviations of the mean and then what are the minimum and maximum platelet counts that are within three standard deviations of the mean. Remember Chubby Chubbs applies to all sets of data no matter what they look like and basically they're saying that um, the K is the number of standard deviations from the mean so when we substitute R k is 3, we get 1 minus 1 over 3 squared, which is 9, or 8 ninths, okay? And when we turn 8 ninths into a percent, we get 89%. And to find the minimum count and the maximum count, we're going to go back to our um, rule of thumb and our empirical rule and find out what are the values that are three standard deviations to the left and three standard deviations to the right and that would be our minimum and our maximum that would be normal okay so here's the answer set and we've got one minus one over three squared is 89 percent of the women have platelet counts within three standard deviations of the mean and then we're going to go back to our empirical rule we're going to go, the minimum count is the mean minus three times the standard deviation, which is going to give us 58.9. The maximum count is going to be 255.1 plus three times um, the standard deviation is 451.3. So, so the 58.9 would be the minimum value that would be within three standard deviations and the 451.3 would be the maximum value that would be within three standard deviations. We are finally done with 3.2's homework. I hope that you have found this helpful. And this is Mrs. A and may God bless your day.